you must have been, after all that, at least impressed by the second half fight, you know, nine men against 11 in those circumstances. Yes, I just have compliments for the players who were on the uh, on the pitch in the second half. Uh, because uh, once you are down and, and down to uh, also to eight field players, um, our plan for the second half was to stay unbelievably solid, to stay united, to stay spirited, to defend all the crosses, all the long balls, uh, all the set pieces, to stay anyhow in the game, and then I had to take more risks, perhaps in the last five or ten minutes, in order to be there with a with a lucky punch and. Uh, the lads on the pitch were then brilliant in the in the second half. They showed an unbelievable spirited performance in a in a difficult situation. And um, yeah, the game plan more more or less worked there yeah, because we had this one chance for a lucky punch when when Landes was there and Danny Pope there was an unbelievable save as well. Um, yeah, then it fits a bit to the situation that one of the best field players on the pitch, Ben Godfrey, I think he was fantastic tonight, was there with such a unnecessary and unlucky uh, own goal in the hour, of course, and the second goal uh, killed the game. But um, yeah, for our reaction in the second half, I just have compliments and I was pleased with the players on the pitch. Who oh, you, your, your face in the, the cutaway when the narrow goal went in kind of summed it all up, really. <laughs> Yes, of course, because uh, not because I felt sorry for myself. I felt sorry for the players on the pitch because they invested so much. They shifted. They were unbelievably solid. Till this moment, we didn't allow them to have any any chances. To be honest, and it's more like in the last minutes we want to, of course, to take more risk uh, to substitute perhaps even even offense. Although we just had eight field players on the pitch and create this one chance for this. Um, yeah, for a lucky punch out of a set piece, out of a right area free kick, out of a counter attack, and um, like I said before, so the Dets Lets did nothing wrong in the second half, and and on land this had this great chance, great spirited uh, performance. Um, yeah, but then you know, so one of the best free players on the pitch is there was such an unlucky uh, on goal. Then yeah, with second goal, of course, uh, the game was done. Then you know, okay, there's no chance to reward ourselves for unbelievable spirited uh, second half performance. And that, I guess, is when you miss the, the home crowd, most of all, you know, the final game in the Premier League for now, and then that kind of fight in the second half, the crowd would have been so important, wouldn't it? Yes, definitely would have helped today to have our supporters uh, back and, and, and behind us and, and uh, also boost us but to be honest i was not even able to think about the supporters during the game because this was such a complicated game i had to uh, do many tactical changes and to think about how to deal with the situation just to finish this uh, game with eight feet players so um yeah but uh, uh, yeah of course so it's more like uh, with our supporters everything is definitely easier yes any problem with either of the red cards yeah there's many problems uh, to be honest but uh, but i don't want to accuse uh, anyone else. Look, we're sitting on position 20 in the league. Uh, we finished our last home game just with eight field players. It's not up to accuse anyone else and just us and to look in the mirror and uh, these two red cards. Um, to be honest, the story of the game was we had to made, make out of this game uh, our game yeah? because uh, we can't compete with the physicality and the aerial threats of, of Burnley. For that, we need to play on the front foot to bring the ball into their half, to dominate the game, to dominate the ball. That's exactly what we did in the first 25 minutes. Um, Eddie Pope was there with one or two great saves against Ben Godfrey, against Alex Tete. And uh, then Burnley reacted how a pretty established, experienced Premier League side should react in such a situation. They needed to try to break our rhythm, to bring hectic into the game, to provoke us. They start to discuss each and each and every duel and, and wanted to distract us. And to be honest, we, with open eyes, we walked into this trap. Uh, and uh, when they were then there with two emotional red cards, anyhow, you can call them inexperienced, naive, unprofessional, stupid, all the words fits, uh, to, fit, to be honest. Uh, at least they are not acceptable, these two red cards. And uh, yeah, that was the reason why we uh, lost this game. I'd like to say, Daniel, thank you very much. Speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, Paul McInnes. Can we just make it a bit louder? Understand. Was that me? Yes, Paul. Um, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, how much... It's obviously a, a weird time and uh, it, it can't be compared to the early part of the season and do, already difficulties for the team coming into it but it, it's been pretty abject in terms of results and how 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 difficult will it be to put all this behind you to start again in the championship 
Yeah, it's always uh, difficult to shake off relegation. So that's what the history shows. So each and every team uh, who is relegated won't find it easy to um, to be then their spot on the first game day. Of course, it will be difficult, and even a bit more difficult yeah, because it's such a quick turnaround. So just a short summer break, summer break, and a pretty short preseason. But um, we can't complain about the situation. That's that's reality, and we have to cope with it. And for that, um, yeah, of course, it's, it's difficult, but we won't use this as an, as an excuse. We know that the next season will be unbelievably difficult, especially uh, in, the, in the starting game. But uh, we want to prepare ourselves the most perfect way. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Michael Bailey. Hi, Daniel. <clears throat> um, Primarily, I wanted to check about Tim Closer. He came off at half time. How um, how is he? And also Christoph as well, going out there and, and playing. How did he get through those forty five minutes? Given I imagine he hasn't um, played <laughs> played a lot at all. Yes, it was another difficult topic. So Tim Closer had hamstring problems. Um, yeah, he felt his hamstring was was tight and couldn't go on, and uh, was a difficult decision. Yeah, because. Actually, uh, Christoph was, was not prepared for 45 minutes. He was out more or less since, uh, let's be honest, more or less since 12 months and had just one really full team training session with us. So I want him just to be there for the mood and perhaps for the last two or three minutes. But um, yeah, when Tim went off, uh, it's more like we got the feeling, okay, in the second half, there will be many crosses, many um, set piece, wide area free kicks. It's more like uh, we need we need a good header in, in for the second half, and it was a bit risky to bring him in. But one of the positives of this game today was that, that he was there. It was a I think top class performance for this uh, for the situation, and he showed even although he was not preferred how much we missed him uh, in the last uh, let's be honest 12 months. And um, that's the only positive that he was able to cope with his 45 minutes, so he was not complaining about. Uh, too many problems in right now after the game. We have to wait like, right now a little bit, but uh, at least we have uh, eight days right now to prepare ourselves for the for the Man City game. And that's one of the positive uh, that uh, Christoph, Christoph was back. And today, I think his performance was was quite good. Um, if I'm honest, I'm also a bit concerned about Alex Setti because his knee was swollen after after the game. There was not a hit or whatever, but he was also um, moaning about, uh, about some pain. So we have to wait how this recovers if he's available for the... Uh, for the Man City game, and uh, yeah, quite obviously the, the two lads will also be um, not allowed to to play with the red card. So for that, um, yeah, we'll be tricky with the team selection. But um, yeah, we'll, I will um, take care about this problem uh, anyhow during the next week. I'm still more annoyed about the outcome of the of the final home game. Thank you, Daniel. Cheers. Okay. Paddy David. Daniel, commiserations again, mate. So, really sorry, I didn't hear your answer on the, on the two red cards. What was your thoughts on them? Yes, my answer was uh, we finish on position 20 in the league. Um, we finished the game today with eight field players in such a situation. It's not uh, to accuse anyone uh, else. It's more like to, to show in the mirror and to accuse ourselves. Um, the two red cards... Um, the story of the game was uh, that... Um, uh, we needed to make out of this game our game and to play on the front foot to bring the ball into the opponent's half because we can't compete with the physical and aerial threats of, of, uh, of Burnley. And for that, it was important to play front foot for football. And that's what we did in the first 25 minutes. Um, Eddie Pope with one or two great saves against Ben Godfrey, Alex Sete. We played exactly how we wanted to play. And then Burnley reacted in a way how a pretty established, experienced Premier League side should react. They, they tried to break our rhythm. They, they tried to bring hectic into this game. They were trying to provoke us. There was a scene with Tarkovsky and Max Ahrens. They tried to distract us and, and put our focus uh, focus a bit away. They started to discuss each of every whistle of the referee, each of every duel. Uh, to be honest, I'm not accusing them. It's more like this is how a smart, experienced, established uh, side reacts when they, they, when they feel they are a bit in, in, in problems. And we walked with open eyes and into the strap and uh, reacted over emotional and and got two red cards and uh, yeah you can call this red cards however you want so naive inexperienced unprofessional stupid and all the words fit uh, to be honest so at least they are definitely not not uh, acceptable and uh, we will ha definitely have to speak about uh, about these two red cards internal and um, yeah of course these two red cards were crucial that we that we lost this game so just to follow up, I mean, what you're saying there is basically whatever's going on around the game, you've talked about game management this season, 
young players as well learning at the highest level. This is another sort of part of their learning curve, isn't it? Yeah, it shows both. It shows that the experienced side knows exactly when they are problems, know what they have to do to bring hectic into the game, to to break the rhythm, to set signs, yeah, to disturb the opponent, and then on the other hand, then our inexperience and naivety to to react and and uh, not to stay focused on our game, more like to let us provoke and uh, to react uh, emotional. Uh, not the whole team, but uh, definitely a few players, and um, yeah, that's definitely what. Um, what I mentioned several times that, that we have to learn this. Uh, I'm, I'm not accusing my players for having a learning curve, for uh, being inexperienced, for being naive. Uh, but uh, if we if we react uh, like conceding this two red cards, it's it's definitely something that is not acceptable. And in this topics, we'll have internally to to be definitely a bit more strict than uh, like with uh, mistakes during the game. That's definitely for sure. It's fine. I wonder if I can just on a personal level now. Do you just really want to? get Man City out of the way, put this season behind you and then just start looking forward. How, how, how fired up are you for the challenge ahead, basically, over the summer and then next season? Yes, first of all, I think it's it's important that uh, we we show character in the last in the last game at Man City. Of course, it's it's not like a Champions League final, so it's not like it changed the whole season, but we want to be there with a with a good last last game and a spirited performance. To be honest, if I have to judge our defensive behavior against Chelsea and also today what we did in terms of discipline, in terms of in terms of in terms of unity, in terms of being solid, and in terms of defending, um, I just have to praise them. And I expect uh, I, ex I want my players to show this exactly also in the in the, in the last game against Man City to get. Uh, also, the best result that we can get out of out of this game. But then, yeah, of course, the focus is uh, is a lot uh, then already on the on the next season there yeah, because it will be a difficult season without any doubt. But it's also like yeah, out of the last games, you can also learn a lot about about your team and about the players. And uh, this is what we take uh, also into the next season. Thanks, Danny. Cheers. Thanks. And finally, um, Isabel Barker. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for your time. I was wondering what you kind of said to the lads at half time, considering the reaction was so good, so solid after half time, and obviously you went down to eight um, outfield players. So how did you keep the heads up? Yeah, first of all, of course, uh, the the players were furious uh, with the two red cards anyhow, and and uh, they were pretty on fire. It was was important to calm them a bit down at, at half time and say, listen, we can't change and influence what has happened in the in the first half. Uh, right now we have to concentrate on to deal with the situation and it's more like we spoke about a few technical things also about a few um, soft skills and in terms of mentally prepared being prepared for just defending and waiting unbelievable patient for this uh, for this mo one moment in order to stick together to to wait for the moment when we can be there with lucky punch to to equalize this game and I have many many compliments how we dealt with the, with this uh, situation and uh, yeah for that I'm, I'm I'm proud of the reaction in the, in the second half of the players who were on the uh, on the pitch uh, because in the, yeah, in the first half at halftime I was also on fire and uh, the inner flame was also burning and could could throw some things to the room but it wouldn't have helped so it was important to calm them down and, and also to speak about this tactical and also mental necessities for the second half. Thank you Daniel. Cheers. Thanks a lot.